I'm a dietetic student and I'm seeing firsthand what they're recommending to America to to patients and it's it's not it's not good. Um, I really want to ask you what in your opinion through all your years of experience what needs to be done to to see this health revolution that we really need. Well, we just need to change the form of payment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all we need to do. This uh, week, this past week, again, this is uh, August 28th, so in the past week, uh, the Annals of Internal Medicine published uh, two papers, uh, and these papers are, uh, one, a study of the various data, and the other is the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommendation. The U.S. Preventive Service Task Force <clears throat> just put out a recommendation that uh, doctors, the medical community, put effort into intensive dietary and lifestyle change. This is a grade grade B recommendation that we focus our. This is a, this is paramount that we focus our efforts on intensive, which is what I do. I mean, I'm one of the few people in the country who does this, and intensive dietary and lifestyle recommendations. Now, this has further meaning that uh, hopefully we'll be able to address as time goes on. When the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force puts out a grade B or A recommendation, this is a grade B, then the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, uh, has to recommend this for its insured. Okay, so what this means is uh, the major insurance controller in the country, the, the Affordable Care Act, the Ob Obamacare, uh, now is required because of the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommendation for intensive diet lifestyle, which is, by the way, what dietitians would be the key role in doing, <clears throat> now must recommend this for doctors to do which you would think followed would now require, I would think, again, we have to explore all this, but I would think would require insurance companies to pay, you know, because other treatments get C and D recommendations. In other words, they're useless, like the drug therapies and heart surgeries. And, you know, they get horrible recommendations from the U.S. Presented Service to Task Force, uh, sc very screening tests that are done. And still, the insurance companies pay for these things. And the Affordable Care Act says no, not for C's and D recommendations, but for A and B. So I don't know what's going to follow, but what should follow because of the U.S. Preventative Service Task Force recommendation this week, and because of the way the Affordable Care Act is laid out, what should follow is uh, insurance companies and uh, major self-insured businesses like Whole Foods Market, and Ford Motor Company, and General Motors, and IBM, and Apple. I assume they're all self-insured. But anyway, regardless, you get the point. Uh, these companies now should not only feel that they're allowed to, but should feel required to offer their participants, their employees, their insured, the uh, opportunity and be paid for by the employer and insurance company, the opportunity to be involved in intensive dietary and lifestyle changes. I mean, all that should follow. It just should be a simple step-by-step, uh, -step, just cascade into what you just asked, which is how do we as dietitians uh, get involved? How do medical doctors uh, who understand that people are suffering from food poisoning, how do they cure their patients? How do we empty the hospitals of these dietary diseases? Well, you get it paid for to do the right. You have to get paid to do the right thing. We all have to put shoes on the baby, you know, pay for tuition for our kids, keep our uh, cars running, our houses warm, etc. I mean, it's just the way it is. It ain't going to change. But if you can do that by doing the right thing, then it, everything should work out. And I have told dietitians all the way from Mumbai, India, to uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, and in between, I have told dietitians, you are the most valuable arm, and I've told them for the last 40 years, over and over again, you're the most valuable arm of the medical business. But though you're also the most neglected 
You're the most abused. There is a bullying system that goes on in the medical business. And the bullies are the doctors. And the people who get bullied are the nurses and the dietitians and the other lesser folks. That needs to be changed. And one way to change it would be to change the financial reward system. Don't give the bullies any money anymore. <laughs> Give them, to the, give them to the people who really make a difference. Don't give them to the heart surgeon who slits the chest open for 100 grand or, uh, you know, or whatever. You get the point. These, these, uh, uh, these prescribers of death, disability, destruction, and false hope, those prescribing the drugs and surgeries for chronic disease, need to stop getting the money. Just don't give them the money anymore. That's and then everything will change. And those who do good things, which, by the way, the Affordable Care Act focuses on, if you do the right thing, you save Medicare money, shared savings, then, you know, you can pay. There are a whole bunch of programs in the Affordable Care Act that allow us to do the right thing. All right, so you do the right thing, and you get paid for it, and we just flip flop the whole system. I would love to see the dietitian be the first the first person who consoles every patient with, with chronic problems, not, not acute, you know, not lacerations, broken bones, etc., infections, but with chronic diseases due to food poisoning, the, uh, the fixer of food poisoning should be the first one to see the patient. And that fixer of food poisoning is the dietitian or, or, or allied uh, thinking people. Uh, will it happen? I think so. I know I... I'm encouraged every day. I uh, have to say there have been times in my life when I, I felt there's just no way, like with the resurgence of Atkins and the low-carb diets and now Wee Billy and Grain Brain and the other knockoffs of the Atkins diet. There are days in the cover of Time magazine telling us to eat butter. There are days when it feels like somebody just punched me in the stomach. And uh, that we'll never, never have an opportunity to fix this. And there are other days when I realize uh, that we're making progress, there are more of us starchivores, vegetarians, vegans, environmentalists, animal rights people. There are more of us every day. And uh, once you see this, you know, nobody changes you back. Once you understand the environmental impact or the abuse in the farm yard that goes on, once you've seen that, once you see the suffering in people and why they're sick and how it's so simple to fix them by feeding them rice, corn, and potatoes, you know, once a, uh, you know, once an average lay person or a medical doctor or a dietitian or a politician sees this, you can't you can't close your eyes again. I mean, it's not like oh, oh no 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 I misread it. I, I should go out there and uh, kill myself a cow and slice it up and eat it. Oh, I'll cook maybe I'll cook it. You know, you never get back into that type of thinking. Once your eyes are open. So more and more people's eyes are being open. But unfortunately, the money just outpaces the truth. Uh, they have the money. We have the truth and success. Uh, will we catch up uh, before it's too late? I, can't, I still can't answer that question. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, yourself, your listeners, myself, my team, and a whole bunch of other people uh, in the United States and across the world are not going to give up. The stakes are too great. Uh, we're talking about uh, saving the planet, so making this a worthwhile place for human beings and animals to live. We can't do that, but we can't, uh, we can't uh, pause. Uh, there's no room to pause and say, well, you know, I've done my share. I'm not going to do any more. You know, it's just no sense. You, no, none of us can do that. We just have to keep every day getting up and asking, what can we do today? Yeah, I realize it wasn't a good day. The Wall Street Journal had an article by Nina that says that eating animals is good. Or uh, the New York Times had another article that says that saturated fat <laughs> and foods won't give you heart disease. You know, there are those days, but it, does, it doesn't matter. You just kind of got to, okay, <laughs> right. you know, keep going because the truth's the truth. And uh, the liars will catch it. The liars, the polluters, the cheaters will be caught because of the um, technology information that we have these days, unless they can shut down the, uh, you know, our computers and uh, right. our, our, our devices and our access to free information. We, we'll beat them. That's, that's really hopeful to hear. And uh, what I try to encourage people to do is, you know, to speak up about this any way they can. If they're interested in health, to pursue a career in dietetics or to even make simple, 
simple YouTube videos of just showing what you eat in a day and just getting more and more people on board and hopefully slowly but surely change, change the world one person at a time. Yeah, you do that. Uh, it's real important that you also look the part. You know, you have to, even though that you're concerned about animal rights and the environment, you can't be a fat vegan. <laughs> that's right. And, and that's no offense attended, intended, but you have to look the part. Uh, you have to, you know, like Bill Clinton does. I mean, Bill Clinton went from a, a pudgy, sickly young man to somebody you see these days who is strong, vibrant, handsome, desirable, attractive, whatever word you want to use. Uh, James Cameron, the guy who did Avatar, I saw him a couple of nights ago on TV. And I also saw him in person about a year ago, and he was pudgy. You know, not, not greatly so. You'd probably have never identify him as being overweight or unhealthy in any way. But you look at that man's... Uh, that man's uh, uh, energy, you look at uh, the, the extra trimness, the extra uh, circulation, whatever you want, whatever it is in detail or just an effect of radiation of health. You look at him uh, on, the, on the, the talk shows now promoting his new 3D movie of his deep dive. You see a whole new man. Uh, so there's this, uh, this radiance of good health that's only possible when you stop the food poisoning. Uh, you can trim down, you can eat less, you can uh, go on the Atkins diet. Uh, you can do a lot of things to lose weight. You can take chemotherapy. You can have gastric bypass surgery. I mean, there's a lot of ways to lose weight, but you won't look good. I mean, you'll there'll still be that, that uh, pudgy, uh, unhealthy, uh, cyanotic, greasy appearance you'll still carry to people. That, that energy you radiate won't be there in terms of your personal appearance and your attractiveness until you stop the food poisoning. Anyway, uh, that got a little carried away. Yes, you need to uh, radiate uh, this good health uh, to people around you by eating well. Yeah, in your churches, you need to sit down with uh, fellow members at your PTA, at your Kiwanis Club, uh, in, in your business, uh, your company, your uh, you're your employer or employee. You need to just talk about this incessantly, uh, hopefully not offending too many people, but one way or another, either getting in their face or just looking great, you need to keep this message going. Everybody can. In fact, I, I know this is going to have to come from the bottom up. It is just not going to come from the top down because there's too much at stake politically. I've been told recently because I've had the ideas we've discussed right now, I've been talking to people in Washington about. And uh, the, the response is, John, look, this is just politically too hot a topic. You have an entire political party representing industry that is not happy about you telling the drug industry, the vitamin pill industry, the uh, beef industry, the fish industry, the dairy industry, that uh, they can't do business anymore because they're killing people. That does not fit favorably in politics, John. And until you change politics, you aren't going to be able to talk about it. And it is true. I'm not able to talk about it because it's politically uh, unfavorable. Uh, people lose elections because of this attitude. And being associated with me is, uh, is not a good thing for somebody who wants to win elections. So, uh, or these ideas. Uh, being vegetarian is actually a dirty word. You've seen that happen with the Clintons recently. Uh, a guy named Mark Hyman came out and claimed that he was Clinton's doctor and he's trying to get Clinton off his vegan diet. This is all political BS. Uh, Chelsea Clinton declaring she's not or never has been vegan. That's, you know, from what I've read and heard, that's all BS. Uh, Hillary wants to win. She wants to win in 2016. You can't be associated with vegans or vegetarians to get the political support you need to win the election. And I agree. I agree. I, you know, if you want Hillary to win, then don't use the word vegan next to the Clinton family. It's just the way it is. It's not right. It's not fair. But it is fact. So they're distancing themselves from a diet that saved Bill Clinton's life and was uh, uh, Chelsea Clinton's uh, moral compass for many years. I don't think Hillary's ever kind of got it yet, but uh, it's just so politically charged. Uh, anyway, they maybe politics will change. My attorneys in Washington say, John, maybe next year, maybe next year we can team up with you because they know how important it is without us losing our uh, lobbying business, it happens to be in this case, without us losing our political connections 
uh, which is what they're concurred or concerned about if they take a strong attitude about the things that we discussed. And you can understand it. It's just business. Absolutely, yeah. But nonetheless, still getting the word out is going to do so much good. And I thank you so much because you have done so much for this movement as well. I, I'm, I've got another, I figure i got another 10 to 20 years at it unless uh, unless the charts have it differently. But yeah, we have, uh, we have a task. As you say, everybody has to do it. You have to do it. Or your listeners have to do it. You need to take this uh, YouTube video if you like it, share it with everybody you know, and the rest of the work we're doing. Keep sticking it in their face. It takes more than one time for people to learn things. Just because they don't get it the first time, just because you get a negative reaction the first time, you can't stop. 